unnecessary disclaimers. Yeah, it's setting up a joke about someone named Jenny Beckman, but she thought You're So Vain was about her, and she wasn't even born when that song came out. So maybe we're trying too hard to shoot down Jenny Beckman's frivolous claims, is all I'm saying. Movie takes us to day 488, and I can already tell Zoe's not in love with Joey, so maybe this should have come with a spoiler warning. This is a story. Jesus. Narration too? Is the narrator also going to disparage Jenny Beckman? This character is, let's just say, around 30 in present day of this movie, which came out in 2009. So he would have been 11 or 12 in the early 90s. What kid in the early 90s had this much f***ing vinyl? Yes, vinyl is back in style now, but it was replaced by cassettes and then CDs as outdated technology for a good couple decades before coming back in vogue. And a total misreading of the movie, The Graduate. Look, Dustin Hoffman and Catherine Ross are happy at the end of The Graduate. They got on that bus, remember? It's not my fault Mike Nichols left the camera on and the actors didn't know what to do and the uncertainty was kept in the film. Dustin Hoffman was 29, playing a college graduate, and Mrs. Robinson was only six years older than he was. That movie is full of lies, so Tom read that movie correctly. Life just sucks sometimes. But you should know up front, this is not a love story. Oh, cool! Can I get my refund at the box office, or will Fox Searchlight take care of me? It would have been nice if you had put that in the advertising. Look, I remember seeing Joseph Gordon-Levitt on Family Ties back in 1988. You, sir, are no Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Anyway, why are we watching footage of kids again? Movie, this relationship is moving too fast. I want to start seeing other movies. Calling 11-year-olds at night to bicycle over to your apartment to give relationship advice. There's so much wrong here, I'm gonna give five sins. Maybe Tom doesn't need relationship advice. Maybe Tom is just an asshole. Of course this dickhead would be ahead of the vinyl revival curve. I bet he also buys Bitcoin and has his own sourdough starter. It seems like cheating for a movie charting 500 days of a relationship to start the day counter when they first met. Is it normal or creepy to start the count at first sight? I lean towards creepy. I met a girl the first week of college that I didn't date until two years later, and we dated for about six months. So if this was our movie, it wouldn't be two years and six months of Kristen. It would be just six months of Kristen. You know, starting from when we started dating. Summer just moved here from... Michigan. Michigan. There's only two kinds of people in the world. There's women, and there's men. Yes, yes, that's very binary of you, movie, but why on earth do you need to bring this up? This is like beginning your Wall Street essay with Webster's Dictionary defines economics as the study of making, selling, and consuming goods and services. To wit, in 1998, Summer quoted a song by the Scottish band Bell and Sebastian and Problem. The album that song is on came out in September of 1998. Yearbooks either come out in the spring just before the school year is over, or they come out in the fall after the previous year, but either way, the photos and quotes are completed the previous school year. So, Summer somehow quoted lyrics from an album that hadn't been released yet. The absolute lack of prices on this menu board is driving me crazy. I hear she's a bitch. Yeah, Patel tried to talk to her in the copy room. She's totally not having it. Not talking to someone in the copy room apparently makes you a bitch to this guy, who from here forth I shall call Trash Goblin. Here yeah, the happy couple meets cute because they both love the Smith. They both love a band that peaked when they were in kindergarten. Honestly, have a character love a retro band is lazy writing 101. F you, movie. Offices do not have office-wide cake parties when a single employee gets engaged. Jesus. Time is money, people. This is America. You just moved here, right? Mm-hmm. When? Saturday. Okay, but this is day eight of the increasingly misnamed 500 Days of Summer, right? So who would just say Saturday when they meant last Saturday? You used to call me anal girl. I was very neat and organized. Yeah, I doubt that even in the late 90s or early 2000s, you would be called anal girl for that reason. You're either lying or you went to Virgin Ears College for Women, and your friends spent their formative years at year-round vacation Bible school. Absolutely nothing dates this movie harder than f***ing Wii Tennis. Just because some cute girl likes the same bizarro crap you do, that doesn't make her your soulmate, Tom. Amen. And that was the end of that conversation. I guess the movie wasn't ready to explain the relationship advice Chloe Grace formed while watching The Lobster. I'm going to the supply room. Do you guys need anything? I think you know what I need. It looks like Tom went to the scumbag school of sexual harassment where he majored in hostile workplaces with an emphasis on plausible deniability, using the Smiths as a siren song. What's gonna happen now? Everyone ridicules you for your failed production of Homer's Odyssey, that's what. You leave on your own, and you go home, and you cry, and you want to die. Dude, you threw up on the stage, you tried to fight the bartender, and you threatened to burn the place down. Trying to make your secondary characters more interesting through anecdotes that can't possibly be true. With this Elf and the Yes Man movie, I'm thinking Zoe Deschanel has a singing clause in her contract. I wanted to sing Born to Run, but they didn't have it. F*** you! Every bar karaoke has Born to Run, you dicks! I named my cat after Springsteen. Okay, well, what was his name? Bruce? Stupid question, sure, but stupid name, too. Nobody's gonna know you named your cat Bruce after Bruce Springsteen from his first name only. You could just as easily have named it after the shark and Jaws. I like being on my own. Relationships are messy and people's feelings get hurt. Literally every single romantic comedy ever made has a character that believes this. It's love, it's not Santa Claus. 
Well, what does that word even mean? I've been in relationships and I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh man, you're missing out then because there is nothing better for a relationship than Santa Claus. He knows just where your pleasure zones are. I am now re-annoyed at the karaoke DJ who apparently has the Pixies but not Bruce Springsteen. Trash God with his terrible comedy fodder. Man, he is way too sober right now. He was absolutely hammered when he sang the Pixies. Even if they stayed five more hours, he wouldn't be this sober. After he was too shy last night, now she just walks up and starts kissing him. And let's just say this, kids. Young man, this is not common, and you should not expect this. Did you bang her? No. What, hum job? No. Hand job? Since when is this guy all about sex gossip? Nothing we've seen in the first 25 minutes of this movie suggests he's the type of dude who does this. But because Summer's in the apartment and she'll overhear it, of course now he is. I think this goes without saying, but running through an Ikea to make out in one of their bedroom displays is a sin. I'm pretty sure if you do this in an Ikea, they ask you to leave. And by pretty sure, I mean I'm not allowed inside Ikea stores anymore. She wants to keep it casual. Which is why she's in my bed right now. Dude, she's in the other room. She can, at the very least, hear you mumbling to yourself. At least turn on some water or something. While Tom performs this I just had sex dance number scored by Hall and Oates, I'm wondering why every f***ing person he interacts with is wearing blue. Is blue the color of afterglow? No, no, I get it. I'm way too dumb to understand the symbolic meaning, but won't you consider my needs? Also, he has sex and suddenly he's emo Peter. This dude on his cell phone throws a bat to Tom and he pretends to hit a home run and everyone is delighted. But my guess is that this bat is the murder weapon from nearly 17 homicides in the New Jersey area. And we should never celebrate home runs hit by evidence. Also, why are most of the people celebrating his post-coital walk to work and this lady is just walking away from it. She's the woman to whom he tossed his bag a second ago. So why is she the designated not fun haver of the group? Aw, oh, this isn't about to turn into Enchanted, is it? So it's day 300 something, and they are broken up, and we are still counting these days? This movie's title is a lie! Okay, first off, Tom has an email with the subject of lunch that came in from a sender called Info. That's f***ing weird. Second off, the dates of these emails show we're in early May, probably May 8th. Just before this scene began, the day counter told us it was day 303. Now, I know from experience that counters can be wrong from time to time. They can even turn into 2.0 versions and come back as the original mysteriously. And in this case, the day counter is way off because the narrator told us... Tom meets Summer on January 8th. That means it's been 119 days, and not even Leap Year is going to save this egregious error. <laughs> and thus the idea for Don John was born. Ooh, this looks good. Gets really good reviews. The movie that Summer says looks good and has good reviews, the split second she runs into the adult video section is sweet and shower. However, this video cover does not convey the greatness. As he draws on her arm, I'm finally realizing this movie is just 90 minutes of meet cute stuff. Well, that's not true. It's 45 minutes of meet cute stuff and 45 minutes of breakup cliches. Wait, I forgot about the credits. So it's 42 minutes of meet cute stuff. You know what? You get the point. It's kind of messy. 109 days and he hasn't seen her place? They slept together at his place back in the 30s. For Tom Hansen, this was the night where everything changed. Ah, I thought the narrator left to go get cigarettes like my dad did when he left me and my mom. Instead, he snuck up on me like my stepdad in the shower. Now they're doing the whole blow on an eyelash, make a wish and I'm gonna puke. I mean, boyfriend, girlfriend, man, all that stuff is... It's really juvenile. You sound gay. Quick survey, is dating a woman and not being able to put a label on it gay? This movie has some real food for thought. This is Lars from Norway. Just some guy, she went to the gym with Brad Pitt's face and Jesus' abs. So, Brad Pitt then? Also, I seriously doubt Jesus spent much time doing crunches. Watch the f***ing road, asshole! Manic Pixie Dream Girl, the movie. And sure, I appreciate that the movie is probably trying to f*** with that concept by having her ultimately break his heart and not be the one. She's still an MPDG. You with this guy? Hey, I'm Tom. Whatever. Comically over-the-top asshole guy is comically over-the-top. I get the sense that people live in apartments like these so that movie directors can show characters in a symbolic downward spiral. Our character must be feeling some serious inner turmoil as a torrential downpour makes its presence felt in the rain belt of Los Angeles. I shouldn't have done that. Done what? Gotten mad at you. I'm sorry. F***ing what? Listen, Tom knew the f***ing rules. And yeah, they were having sex, but they were always casual and friends. He gets violent with a troll in the bar, and yeah, the guy deserved it, but leaving it alone was the right call, and we all know it, and she is fine to be angry at him for it. But now she's going across town in the rain and apologizing to him? Having a chalk wall, a portion of which is being blocked by a cock. For a brief time in college, there was, um, there was Charlie. She was nice, but... Woman reels off her exes, and there's a surprise lesbian relationship cliche. Penis. Penis. 
a state play who dares to say penis louder? I am dialing my lawyer because I swear to holy Moses, me and a college friend played this game in 1994. And sure, you could say it's one of those cultural phenomena that spread virally before the internet, like that list in the early 80s of all the humorous different types of poopies. But I literally never heard of anyone else playing this game besides myself and my college friend. Penis! Look, I understand playing this game. I did it at a Best Buy just the other day, but you can't play it in a park. A park has connotations. Whether you like it or not, you're on a sex offender list right now. Honestly, the movie jumps around so much I completely lose track of their narrative. Maybe that's the point. There were ups, there were downs, they came, they went. But the gimmick of jumping back and forth ultimately is its own undoing. Just a series of fun and sad moments, like watching a Clips episode of the TV show of their relationship. The marquee forgot that it's also mostly vagina. There is no f***ing way there are this many people watching Vagiant, especially during a matinee. Also, have movie directors ever seen an actual movie audience before? Nearly everybody in this audience is reacting in some way. I've been to movies where there is encouraged audience participation that didn't have this level of activity. Also, also, this guy showed up to the movie about a part vampire, part giant, and dressed up as a magician. This fake French film about his grief goes on for some time. Here's something that you wrote last week. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, f*** you whore. Hilarious, but why did you print that card out at all? He doesn't print cards, he writes for them. Someone saw this, probably three dozen someones, and thought it was fit to send to the print room. Does it ruin the joke if instead of the card he's reading this from a piece of paper here? Because I don't think it does even one bit. I HATE THIS SONG! Have we considered that maybe Tom is just an asshole? Oh, I've already made that observation when he was smashing the plates? Maybe the movie is putting it out there for us in plain sight? I understand being upset over a woman, but this is f***ing overboard. Gah! The movie even snuck in a characters in a rom-com get stuck at the kids' table at a wedding cliché. Didn't they say this was a train... Local service to Santa Barbara. To Santa Barbara. From Los Angeles? Why is the movie making that seem like a journey? It's two hours tops, and it was broad daylight when he boarded, but now we're at dusk, and they've been talking, and then they get to the... I guess it's a wedding? And it's not so dusk anymore, and the sun is actually casting shadows toward the ocean! And in Santa Barbara, that definitely means the sun is in the east, and it's f***ing morning. Point is, this movie gets ten sins for sunshine fairy. I guess I just got lucky. Uh Who the f*** is he talking to? Did this movie go four-fifths of the way home and decide we need some Band of Brothers style one-on-one -on -one documentary interviews to really give the audience a full perspective on how and why relationships happen? The f*** is going on? Tom walked to her apartment. Seriously, narrator guy? We were doing just fine without you. Sliding doors as it is, this is the best scene in the movie. But also, why are his expectations walking up to her apartment different from the reality? Time difference aside, if you watch Tom's walk down the hallway, at the same time, there are differences there. So I'm wondering why Tom's walk down the hallway doesn't match his reality there. I guess sometimes you'd expect to be checking your tie before you walk up to the stairs, but the brutal reality is that sometimes you don't. One thing Tom totally got right, this woman in her white and green dress is in both the expectation and reality frames. How did you get that one detail correct? Lucky guess? Or is this an indictment on the person? She's always wearing that dress, Tom says, and he's right! Also, it's hilarious to me that Tom expected there to be a large vase of red flowers, but in reality there was none. Also, also, his expectations were that there would be minimal alcohol at this party, but the reality is that people are all dirty alcoholics putting their bottles just anywhere, a bunch of savages. I would have removed all the sins if in the expectations box this book was written by someone else. She's engaged? Okay, that was fast. For a girl who didn't want a commitment, she committed to forever with the next guy after Tom? It was day 402 when she invited him to this party, which she said was next Friday. So she moved on to a new person like Ross and Friends after the declaration of the break, which is to say she sprinted at him. And fine, love happens, but she was scientifically opposed to love at first sight, and kind of the whole concept of love. So for her to break up with Tom and get engaged within weeks is, well, I can see why Tom would be upset with it, and I'm sending it. It's 2009. Why is this alarm clock from 1995? Judge convenience store managers. Get a room. Really? It's at this point the movie might be going too far in showing us Tom's dickheadedness. Do we even want him to be happy? He needs therapy. And yet, this asshole is somehow going to pull Minka Kelly by the end of this movie. Go for it and you can do it. That's not inspirational. That's suicidal. I mean, if Pickles goes for it right there, that's a dead cat. Miserable Tom would be amazing at cinema sense. Protagonist has a meltdown at work by telling the truth cliché. Man, this movie is adding a lot of new clichés to my sin lexicon. This honest work meltdown thing happens all the time. Why haven't I ever noticed this before? So he's healing and sh and good for him, finally. But why do these still count as summer days? The movie really should have been titled 327 Days of Summer, drawing this at a little girl's soccer match. Now, at the end of the film, we will be treated to a montage that makes certain to highlight all the awful sh in their relationship. It's like the end of La La Land, spiked with a double dose of eternal sunshine. Hello, 911. Yes, I'd like to report an assault. I've just been bludgeoned over the head with movie imagery. You see, architecture was his true love all along. After being rejected by every architecture firm, Tom turns to chalkboard art. She's married, he's
moved on, but somehow these still count as days of summer. And I'd like to just take a minute and tell the title creator of this movie to eat my ass, you lying, no math doing asshole. The movie tries to make architecture exciting by cutting in time lapse traffic shots to make it seem like it's super fast paced and thrilling. I just woke up one day and I knew. Knew what? What I was never sure of with you. Asshole Tom definitely needs to be told this in this way, but damn, that is a f***ing cold way to put it. I was sitting in a deli and reading Dorian Gray and a guy comes up to me and asks me about it and now he's my husband. That sounds suspiciously like how Matt Damon met his future wife and we bought a zoo. This final conversation on the romance bench where they both say all the shit they never said is touching and it makes me want to skip to the tenth power! I guess the 500 days aren't really charting the days of the relationship, but rather charting the days in which Summer lived in Tom's head rent-free. And I still hate the title. Having this much wrought iron in your office building. Minka Kelly is an interviewing for my job in this scene. I think I've seen you there. I haven't seen you. We all know the reason why he never noticed her, and it's totally valid, but not noticing Minka Kelly is a sin. Hey. You again. He's been gone like five seconds. I'm sort of supposed to meet someone after this. Sure. I always wondered why Minka Kelly stood me up, and now I realize it's because she met an unemployed greeting card writer on his 20th architect job interview competing for the same job she was. Why not? Now this movie is We Bought a Zoo. My name's Tom. Nice to meet you. I'm Autumn. God damn it. Fear is for the winter, when the snows fall a hundred feet deep. Free pillow pad is so Let's take a Winston break. Have a glory of commercials. He likes it. No. Uh, you can taste. You wanted hair? It's more. Oh, I'm so many. For only 99. Commercials. What the hell? No, who cares? God, I want so many freaking commercials. From basic menu, it tastes like a sand. Just kidding, I'm getting really upset. Tired. So how do you do it? Sid stabs Nancy. Seven times the kitchen I've lived. She saved my life. I don't, I don't know. I don't care. I'm happy. Aren't you happy? Cut your high and mighty bullshit. I don't need my life. I mean, we have some disagreements, but I hardly think I'm Sid Vicious. You can't catch a falling star. It would burn up in the atmosphere. I'm freaking out, man. Yeah. Yeah, of course I like you. And friends? Right, it's friends. I offered you a chance when we could have done something, and you blew it! I am a star. I'm a star, I'm a star, I'm a star. I am a big, bright, shining star. King me. I hate her knobby knees. I hate the way she licks stamps. I hate her furniture. I love getting up in the morning. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. <laughs>